goddess. A goddess is a female deity. Goddesses have been linked with virtues such as beauty, love, motherhood and fertility, mother goddess cult in prehistoric times. They have also been associated with ideas such as war, creation, and death. In some faiths, a sacred female figure holds a central place in religious prayer and worship. For example, Shaktism, the worship of the female force that animates the world, is one of the three major sects of Hinduism. The primacy of a monotheistic or near-monotheistic great goddess is advocated by some modern matriarchists as a female version of, preceding, or analog to, the Abrahamic god associated with the historical rise of monotheism in the Mediterranean Axis Age. Polytheist religions, including polytheistic reconstructionists, honor multiple goddesses and gods, and usually view them as discrete, separate beings. These deities may be part of a pantheon, or different regions may have tutelary deities. The reconstructionists, like their ancient forebears, honor the deities particular to their country of origin. The noun goddess is a secondary formation, combining the Germanic god with the Latinate s suffix. It first appeared in Middle English from about 1350. The English word follows the linguistic precedent of a number of languages, including Egyptian, Classical Greek, and several Semitic languages, that a feminine ending to the language's word for God. Joseph Campbell in The Power of Myth, a 1988 interview with Bill Moyers, links the image of the Earth or Mother Goddess to symbols of fertility and reproduction. For example, Campbell states that, there have been systems of religion where the mother is the prime parent, the source. We talk of Mother Earth. And in Egypt you have the Mother Heavens, the goddess Nut, who is represented as the whole heavenly sphere. Campbell continues by stating that the correlation between fertility and the goddess found its roots in agriculture. Inanna was the most worshipped goddess in ancient Sumer. She was later syncretized with the East Semitic goddess Ishtar. Other Mesopotamian goddesses include Ninkursag, Ninlil, and Tu, and Gaga. Goddesses of the Canaanite religion. Balat Gabal, Astarte, and Nut. In pre Islamic Mecca, the goddesses Uzzah, Manat, and Alat were known as the daughters of God. Uzzah was worshipped by the Nabataeans, who equated her with the Graeco Roman goddesses Aphrodite, Urania, Venus, and Chilestus. Each of the three goddesses had a separate shrine near Mecca. Uzzah was called upon for protection by the pre Islamic Quraysh. In 624, at the battle called Uhud, the war cry of the Quraysh was, O people of Uzzah, People of Hubal. Tawil 1993. In fact, in ancient times, the goddess and god were known as Allah and Allah, or what would better be termed as deities representing husband and wife. According to Ibn Ishaq's controversial account of the Satanic verses, QV, these verses had previously endorsed them as intercessors for Muslims, but were abrogated. Most Muslim scholars have regarded the story as historically implausible. While opinion is divided among Western scholars such as Leon Catani and John Burton, who argue against, and William Muir and William Montgomery Watt, who argue for its plausibility. Pre-Christian and pre-Islamic goddesses and cultures that spoke Indo-European languages. Goddesses and other worldly women in Celtic polytheism include the Celts honored goddesses of nature and natural forces, as well as those connected with skills and professions such as healing, warfare and poetry. The Celtic goddesses have diverse qualities such as abundance, creation and beauty, as well as harshness, slaughter and vengeance. They have been depicted as beautiful or hideous, old hags or young women, and at times may transform their appearance from one state to another, or into their associated creatures such as crows cows, wolves or eels, to name but a few. In Irish mythology in particular, tutelary goddesses are often associated with sovereignty and various features of the land, notably mountains, rivers, forests and holy wells. Surviving accounts of Germanic mythology and Norse mythology contain numerous tales of female goddesses, giantesses, and divine female figures in their scriptures. The Germanic peoples had altars erected to the mothers and matrons and held celebrations specific to these goddesses, such as the Anglo-Saxon Mother's Night. Various other female deities are attested among the Germanic peoples, such as Nerth is attested in an early account of the Germanic peoples, Easter attested among the pagan Anglo-Saxons, and St. Gund attested among the pagan continental Germanic peoples. Examples of goddesses attested in Norse mythology include Frigg, wife of Odin and the Anglo-Saxon version of whom is namesake of the modern English weekday Friday, Skadi, one-time wife of Njorth, Njorda, Scandinavian name of Nerthus, that also was married to Njorth during Bronze Age, 
Freya, wife of Ithr, Sif, wife of Thor, Jerthr, wife of Freyr, and personifications such as Jerth, Earth, Sol, the Sun, and Nott, Night. Female deities also play heavily into the Norse concept of death, where half of those slain in battle enter Freya's field Volkvanger, Hell's realm of the same name, and Ran who receives those who die at sea. Other female deities such as the Valkyries, the Norns, and the Deesir are associated with a Germanic concept of fate, Old Norse Orlog, Old English Weird, and celebrations were held in their honor, such as the Disablot and Disting. The Inca pantheon included Pachamama, the Supreme Mother Earth, Mama Killa, a moon goddess, and Mama Aklo, a fertility goddess. The main goddesses in the Maya pantheon were Ishchel, a mother goddess, and the Maya moon goddess. The goddess I presided over eroticism, human procreation, and marriage. Ixteb was the goddess of suicide. In African and African diasporic religions, goddesses are often syncretized with Mary in devotion, as in Azili Bontor, Black Madonna of Psesta Chava, and Arzuli Frida. Mater Dolorosa. There is also Buk, an Ethiopian goddess still worshipped in the southern regions. She represents the fertile aspect of women. So when a woman is having her period, not only does it signify her submission to nature but also her union with the goddess. Another Ethiopian goddess is Atete, the goddess of spring and fertility. Farmers traditionally leave some of their products at the end of each harvesting season as an offering while women sing traditional songs. A rare example of henotheism focused on a single goddess is found among the southern Nuba of Sudan. The Nuba conceive of the creator goddess as the great mother who gave birth to earth and to mankind. Goddess Amaterasu is the chief among the Shinto gods, while there are important female deities Ameno Ozum no Mikoto, Inari and Kanahana Sakuyahai. Hinduism is a complex of various belief systems that sees many gods and goddesses as being representative of and or emanated from a single source, Braham. Understood either as a formless, infinite, impersonal monad in the Advaita tradition or as a dual god in the form of Lakshmi Vishnu, Radha Krishna, Shiva Shakti, and Dvaita traditions. Shaktas, worshippers of the goddess, equate this god with Devi, the mother goddess. Such aspects of one god as male god, Shakti Mon, and female energy, Shakti, working as a pair are often envisioned as male gods in their wives or consorts and provide many analogues between passive male ground and dynamic female energy. For example, Brahma pairs with Saraswati. Shiva likewise pairs with Parvati who later is represented through a number of avatars, incarnations, Sati and the warrior figures, Durga and Kali. All goddesses in Hinduism are sometimes grouped together as the great goddess, Devi. The Shaktis took a further step. Their ideology, based mainly on Tantras, sees Shakti as the principle of energy through which all divinity functions, thus showing the masculine as depending on the feminine. In the great Shakta scripture known as the Devi Mahatmaya, all the goddesses are aspects of one presiding female force, one in truth and many in expression, giving the world and the cosmos the galvanic energy for motion. It expresses through philosophical tracts and metaphor that the potentiality of masculine being is actuated by the feminine divine. More recently, the Indian author Rajesh Talwar has critiqued Western religion and written eloquently on the sacred feminine in the context of the North Indian goddess Vaishno Devi. Local deities of different village regions in India were often identified with mainstream Hindu deities, a process that has been called Sanskritization. Others attribute it to the influence of monism or Advaita, which discounts polytheist or monotheist categorization. While the monist forces have led to a fusion between some of the goddesses, 108 names are common for many goddesses, centrifugal forces have also resulted in new goddesses and rituals gaining ascendance among the laity in different parts of Hindu world. Thus, the immensely popular goddess Durga was a pre-Vedic goddess who was later fused with Parvati, a process that can be traced through texts such as Kalika Purana, 10th century, Durga Bhakti Tarangani, Vidyapati 15th th century, Chandamangal, 16th century, etc. According to Zohar, Lilith is the name of Adam's first wife, who was created at the same time as Adam. She left Adam and refused to return to the Garden of Eden after she made it with Archangel Samael. Her story was greatly developed during the Middle Ages in the tradition of Agadic Midrashim, the Zohar and Jewish mysticism. The Zohar tradition has influenced Jewish folklore, which postulates God created Adam to marry a woman named Lilith. Outside of Jewish tradition, Lilith was associated with the mother goddess, 
Inanna, later known as both Ishtar and Asherah. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh was said to have destroyed a tree that was in a sacred grove dedicated to the goddess Ishtar slash Inanna slash Asherah. Lilith ran into the wilderness in despair. She then is depicted in the Talmud and Kabbalah as first wife to God's first creation of man, Adam. In time, as stated in the Old Testament, the Hebrew followers continued to worship false idols, like Asherah, as being as powerful as God. Jeremiah speaks of his, and God's, displeasure at this behavior to the Hebrew people about the worship of the goddess in the Old Testament. Lilith is banished from Adam in God's presence when she is discovered to be a demon and Eve becomes Adam's wife. Lilith then takes the form of the serpent in her jealous rage at being displaced as Adam's wife. Lilith the serpent then proceeds to trick Eve into eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge and in this way is responsible for the downfall of all of mankind. It is worthwhile to note here that in religions predating Judaism, the serpent was associated with wisdom and rebirth, with the shedding of its skin. The following female deities are mentioned in prominent Hebrew texts. In Christianity, worship of any other deity besides the Trinity was deemed heretical. The veneration of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, as an especially privileged saint has continued since the beginning of the Catholic faith. Mary is venerated as the Mother of God, Queen of Heaven, Mother of the Church, Our Lady, Star of the Sea, and other lofty titles. Marian devotion similar to this kind is also found in Eastern Orthodoxy and sometimes in Anglicanism, though not in the majority of denominations of Protestantism. That being said, the Virgin Mary is not a goddess. In some Christian traditions, like the Orthodox tradition, Sophia is the personification of either divine wisdom, or of an archangel, that takes female form. She is mentioned in the first chapter of the book of Proverbs. Sophia is identified by some as the wisdom imparting Holy Spirit of the Christian Trinity, whose names in Hebrew, Ruach and Shekinah, are both feminine, and whose symbol of the dove was commonly associated in the ancient Near East with the figure of the Mother Goddess. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormons, believe, though don't directly worship, in the existence of a Heavenly Mother who is female counterpart of the Heavenly Father. Its adherents also believe that all humans, both men and women, have the potential to become as gods, through a process known as exaltation. In mysticism, Gnosticism, as well as some Hellenistic religions, there is a female spirit or goddess named Sophia who is said to embody wisdom and who is sometimes described as a virgin. In Roman Catholic mysticism, Saint Hildegard celebrated Sophia as a cosmic figure both in her writing and art. Within the Protestant tradition in England, the 17th century mystic universalist and founder of the Philadelphian Society Jane Lead wrote copious descriptions of her visions and dialogues with the Virgin Sophia who, she said, revealed to her the spiritual workings of the universe. Lead was hugely influenced by the theosophical writings of 16th century German Christian mystic Jacob Bumma, who also speaks of Sophia in works such as The Way to Christ. Jacob Bumma was very influential to a number of Christian mystics and religious leaders, including George Rapp and the Harmony Society. At least since first-wave feminism in the United States, there has been interest in analyzing religion to see if and how doctrines and practices treat women unfairly, as in Elizabeth Cady Stanton's The Woman's Bible. Again in second-wave feminism in the U.S., as well as in many European and other countries, religion became the focus of some feminist analysis in Judaism, Christianity and other religions, and some women turned to ancient goddess religions as an alternative to Abrahamic religions, Woman Spirit Rising 1979, Weaving the Visions 1989. Today both women and men continue to be involved in the goddess movement, Christ 1997. The popularity of organizations such as the Fellowship of Isis attests to the continuing growth of the religion of the goddess throughout the world. While much of the attempt at gender equity in mainstream Christianity, Judaism never recognized any gender for God, is aimed at reinterpreting scripture and degenderizing language used to name and describe the divine, Ruther, 1984, Plaskow, 1991, there are a growing number of people who identify as Christians or Jews who are trying to integrate goddess imagery into their religions, Kien, 2000, Kid 1996, Goddess Christians Yahoo Group. The term sacred feminine was first coined in the 1970s, in New Age popularizations of the Hindu Shakti. Hinduism also worships multitude of goddesses that have their important role and thus an all came to interest for the New Age, feminist, and lesbian feminist movements. 
The term goddess has also been adapted to poetic and secular use as a complementary description of a non-mythological woman. The OED notes 1579 as the date of the earliest attestation of such figurative use, in Loretta the Diuan Petrarch's Goddess. Shakespeare had several of his male characters address female characters as goddesses, including Demetrius to Helena in A Midsummer Night's Dream, O Helen, Goddess, Nymph, Perfect, Divine, Baron de Rosalind in Love's Labor's Lost, A Woman I Forswore, But I Will Prove, Thou Being a Goddess, I Forswore Not Thee, and Bertram to Diana in All's Well That Ends Well. Piscinio also compares Imogen to a goddess to describe her composure under duress and Cymbeline. Most modern pagan traditions honor one or more goddesses. While some who follow Wicca believe in a duotheistic belief system, consisting of a single goddess and a single god, who in Hero Scamos represent a united whole, others recognize only one or more goddesses. In Wicca, the goddess is a deity of prime importance, along with her consort the horned god. Within many forms of Wicca, the goddess has come to be considered as a universal deity, more in line with her description in The Charge of the Goddess, a key Wiccan text. In this guise she is the Queen of Heaven, similar to Isis. She also encompasses and conceives all life, much like Gaia. Similarly to Isis and certain late classical conceptions of Selene, she is the summation of all other goddesses, who represent her different names and aspects across the different cultures. The goddess is often portrayed with strong lunar symbolism, drawing on various cultures and deities such as Diana, Hecate, and Isis, and is often depicted as the maiden, mother and crone triad popularized by Robert Graves, see Triple Goddess below. Many depictions of her also draw strongly on Celtic goddesses. Some Wiccans believe there are many goddesses, and in some forms of Wicca, notably Dianic Wicca, the goddess alone is worshipped, and the god plays very little part in their worship and ritual. Goddesses or demigoddesses appear in sets of three in a number of ancient European pagan mythologies, these include the Greek Arinies, Furies, and Moirai, Fates. The Norse Norns, Brigid and her two sisters, also called Brigid, from Irish or Celtic mythology. Robert Graves popularized the triad of maiden, or virgin, mother and crone, and while this idea did not rest on sound scholarship, his poetic inspiration has gained a tenacious hold. Considerable variation in the precise conceptions of these figures exists, as typically occurs in neo-paganism and indeed in pagan religions in general. Some choose to interpret them as three stages in a woman's life, separated by menarche and menopause. Others find this too biologically based and rigid, and prefer a freer interpretation, with a maiden as birth, independent, self centered, seeking, the mother as giving birth, interrelated, compassionate nurturing, creating, and the crone as death and renewal, holistic, remote, unknowable, and all three erotic and wise. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.